about 10 people showing up, all claiming they'd had implants of one kind or another. So uh, it had strange effects around the world, I think. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Now, I know uh, some other people nowadays are experimenting with that once again. Uh, it made headlines just last year, I believe, in a couple of spots in the U.S., people implanting RFID tags. Of course, that's nine years later after your groundbreaking experiment there in the U.K. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about how the uh, Cyborg 2.0 came about. Was it another case where the technology was there and you thought, let's give it a try? A um, little bit more. We'd, we'd worked with surgeons on that. Um, with, with even with the RFID, we were getting signals into the body and signals out of the body, but we wanted to change the signals dependent on something that was going on in the body. And working with surgeons um, who were particularly dealing with people with spinal injuries, people who were paralyzed, and we wanted to test the technology out, and at the same time, uh, to see if the technology could be useful for people with disabilities, to actually see could we push the boundaries a bit, what extra things could we do. Um, so it was using technology that was there, but at that time had never been used humans at all. In fact, we had to agree that we wouldn't use it in a human uh, in order to get hold of some of the technology that we then used. Mm. Yeah, and now just to describe it a little bit more in detail, I, I think I have a picture here to show of the actual implant, and it, and it looks like um, it, it was the picture that was uh, uh, sent to me by your personal assistant of uh, on a coin. And, and is that the implant? It's a little square thing with it looks like it has many needles on it. Yeah, it has 100 needles, 100 spikes, and uh, that was fired into my nervous system, the main bunch of nerves, the median nerves in my left arm. Uh, it was a two-hour surgical operation uh, by a couple, two neurosurgeons, and they put that in place, and then I had wires coming out of my arm, um, so it was, we could then literally plug me into the computer. So it was bi-directional. We could pick up signals via those electrodes in my nervous system, neural signals, and send them to the computer, but also subsequently we could send signals in via those electrodes into my nervous system that my brain could recognize. I see, yeah. Uh, now, what about the physical effects of uh, putting that in your medial uh, uh, nerve there in your wrist, uh, in your arm? Uh, was there any, let's say, uh, discomfort, pain, or was it something that you could get used to? It just felt like uh, there was a little chunk of, uh, you know, silicon or metal in your arm. Yeah, we, it was one of the things we wanted to see. Would it be painful? I mean, as it happens, um, no, it wasn't. I, I had a, a paracetamol the same day of the operation. The operation I had anesthetic, of course, but later on I had a, a paracetamol just more for prevention, but the next day it was fine. It was in my nervous system and it was not painful at all. Even with wires coming out of my arm, my body was uh, happy with it. Whether, whether that was partly because being a scientist I was uh, excited about doing the experiment, so if there was any pain I didn't notice it, I, I don't know, I'm not sure, but I, I did, there wasn't anything noticeable. And my body quite quickly accepted it. And it was a, a point when the implant, when it was taken out, which was over three months later, this was in my arm for three months, yeah. when it was taken out, tissue had grown round the implant, pulling it in place into my nervous system. So far from trying to reject the, the device, it, quite the opposite had happened. Yeah, well, that is pretty interesting that uh, yeah, the body would uh, accept that. I can see how perhaps being uh, having a positive outlook about the experiment uh, maybe helped as well, uh, uh, such as your brain accepting uh, this kind of foreign uh, piece of the nervous system. Uh, and you, now, you did some experiments with this. I have a little picture uh, of you uh, with a robotic hand. Now, is that, uh, did that robotic hand respond uh, to the way you were moving your own hand? Yes, exactly that. And um, what we did, just to show what was possible, 
um, I went to Columbia University in New York, okay. and uh, we put my nervous system via, via the implant, we put my nervous system live onto the internet and linked up with that robot hand which stayed here in the UK. Um, so as I moved my hand in New York, my brain signals, my neural signals were transmitted via the internet to move the robot hand, which, which mimicked my hand movements in terms of open and close but then on the robot hand you, if you look closely there are little sensors little rubber pads on the fingertips and uh, from that we could get an indication of how much force the hand was applying and from those signals were sent back across the internet to stimulate my nervous system in new york so as the hand the robot hand gripped my brain was receiving pulses of electrical current. The, the more it gripped, the more pulses I received. And how did that, now I'm just wondering how did that feel or how did your brain interpret that haptic uh, interface, uh, you know, with the, the robotic hand? I mean, I'm thinking about grasping, say, a, a tennis ball with my normal hand and I, and I know how that pressure feels and how my brain uh, gets